my YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. I got some more plays out of the Broncos playbook. This right here is, like I said, a two-for-one special. I got a lot of requests earlier in the year to do Broncos, and I never did them. I did a lot of the Broncos last year. That's probably why I typically haven't touched on a lot of the playbooks that I touched on last year. Because once I once I go through a book, the books don't change that much. I mean, there's some plays that change. But uh, they don't change to the point where it's like, you know, a lot of people that might not have followed my channel last year don't know that I already touched on all these playbooks. I have playlists for every team out there. Uh, you just have to look in the uh, title if it says 17 or 18 or whatever. Uh, but I did a lot out of the Broncos last year. I'll probably continue to do more out of the Broncos. It's a really good book. Uh, but either way, I mean, that's something that I could do in the future if you guys want to, you know, let me know in the comment section or hit the like button or whatever. Let me know and I can do that next. Uh, other than that, I'm going to continue with the uh, single back bunch and the pistol bunch. I, if you guys, if you're catching this video first out of the series, I basically am doing these two together because they look so similar. Um, I'll have a little pop-ups and stuff like that so that you guys can see, um, you know, links to the uh, first two videos. If you want to catch the whole series if you, if you like to use the Broncos plays. Uh, this one right here is really going to be a lot of the pro concepts. There's three plays in particular that are in both of these formations that uh, the pros just absolutely love. And the first one I'm going to show... Uh, which is out of the pistol bunch and it's the corner strike um, now this play here this is one of the better corner strikes there's a, a corner strike can be found in a lot of different formations uh, but i typically like this one the most so we'll go ahead and we'll pick that yeah the reason i like this one that is, is really what sanders is doing um, you can motion him out and he's going to be even harder to stop uh, a lot of the plays I showed, like the first play originally, I motioned out that receiver. And uh, you're going to see what that does uh, when he makes that break. Uh, that cornerback actually reacted better than most do. Um, that's, you know, that, that was actually better reaction than most people. But you can also just put Fowler on a slant and run it just like this. He doesn't have to be out to get open. Uh, the R1 route's wide open, though. If you, if you get that underneath coverage with, or no-look coverage, you got to take that. Another thing you can do is if you want to, you can motion out Charles. Um, but I don't find that this table route works too good to the sideline like he did in the past. Um, I find that he just gets to the sideline too quick now and doesn't have a chance to turn up. But uh, those are your, those are your options. Uh, Fowler here, I keep putting him on a slant. You can put him on an in route. You can streak him if it's a cover three. I mean, there's a couple of different things. This doesn't look like a cover three. Uh, but there's a couple of different things you can do. I floated that. It was not a very good throw, but he would have been open. So I'll go ahead and run this a couple more times. Here we got the safety coming up. So let's see if I can lob it up. Uh, I guess I'll take the safe route. They were doing a double safety blitz. Uh, I'm going to get a big play no matter what I do in that scenario. Hoping to see a couple more cover threes so I can expose Fowler. Um, here we got that. Uh, I think that was a cover four. And Thomas is just running wild there. Should have threw it quicker. Um, I, like I said, I will try to motion over Charles a little bit. Here we got another cover three. I'll probably pass Lee the X route in again. And that's just, you know, this, this play can really be adapted to beat anything. Um, and then you can just, you know, leave, leave it kind of as is, and it's pretty good again. So here we go. We got that uh, circle route. He's probably better in line than motioning him out. Yeah, I'd say realistically, Sanders is probably better where he is. Um, and the X route, too, that's also been pretty good against cover, too. Like this here, I'm not sure what that was. That almost looked like a cover four, but streaking him is good against anything. Uh, this play here, Fowler, I mean, you can kind of use him against a cover two or cover three. It doesn't really seem to matter, as you can see there. I'm not sure what these coverages are. There's always people around, but it doesn't really seem to matter as he's just getting open deep uh, regardless. So, um, you know, you can run it like this. Hell, you can even run, if you want to keep that slant for, for the user, you could always put uh, green on a slant. He'll work pretty well uh, with a high-low. Um, I actually messed that up. <laughs> Hit the wrong button and it still worked out. They were sending the house. Uh, but, I, like I said, I, I like what um what fowler's doing sending him on a streak so if you want to put him on that streak uh what green's doing will work really well off the triangle route as you can see here um, that linebacker had to drop back to respect that oncoming slant so this is a, just the play that keeps on giving you just have so much uh possibilities here um they're actually should have went to the running back again to be honest with you um, but that slant is going to open up that running back probably more than um, than the corner strike, if you want to know the truth about it, uh, because he's going to be directly affecting the linebacker that's supposed to be in coverage. So I almost feel like this is one of the better ways to go. There's so many good ways to go here. As, as you see there, Fowler just opens up right in the middle of cover three. Really good play, really dynamic. Now, another scenario where you can use that motion to trick your opponent is the halfback slip screen. We'll go ahead and we'll pick that, and we'll go random nickel. 
this is a play here where I don't really think um, that too many of these options uh, are you're not gonna be able to throw too much to these 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 this bunch of receivers um, in this scenario because typically the, the the way that this is set up you're gonna be on your ass before they really get open unless the circle route and if, if there's nothing underneath a lot of times you can throw to the circle route really quick uh, which I did there gets a couple of yards but if, if you think it's like a cover two or like a hard flat or something, this circle route's not always going to be the man. But you can see he is consistent. You can lead outside, throw to him quick. And that's one good way to run the play. Another good way to run the play is uh, motioning over and doing the exact same thing. Make him think the play's going over there so that the user goes over there and then you can hit him to the other side with the screen. I didn't really follow my blockers too good, but you get the idea. Um, but this is a vertical, you know, you're, you're, what you're looking at here is a vertical uh, concept, um, which is a play I'll actually go over here in a minute. But uh, that's really, um, you know, uh, the vertical play is typically run kind of like this, where I'll do this and then I'll put him on a slant. And I'll go over that in a minute. Um, but this is the same look. So if you run that vertical play, which I'll, I'll show you, like I said, in a minute, um, this could be very confusing for your opponent because uh, they'll see the cluster of receivers. Look at them just hopping these horrible blockers. They'll see the cluster of receivers going out in the normal vertical pattern, and then you can hit them with a screen. But uh, other than that, I mean, these over-the-middle routes, like I don't really think you're going to have time. I was going to try to throw the R1, R1 there. It's never going to happen. Uh, the X route, that's another one. I mean, it doesn't open up quick enough. Uh, like I said, the circle route is the only one that opens up quick enough there. Another really popular play that uh, pros really use quite a bit is the verticals. Now, the vertical play um, is actually in both the uh, single back bunch and the pistol, but the difference is in the pistol, um, it's called the Seattle. And the reason it's called the Seattle is because you can't motion in the running back the way that I'm going to want you to. I'll go ahead and I'll show it to you in both. The Seattle... I guess I'll show one first since I'm not actually going to run it. It's not as effective, in my opinion. Now, in the last play, I did, or the last video, I showed the slip screen, which has the same vertical setup. Um, I meant to show that in the same video, but we'll go ahead and we'll show the Seattle real quick. Now, I guess the difference between the Seattle and the uh, verticals is sometimes in the Seattle, this receiver is closer to the line of scrimmage, uh, which will will prevent you from motioning out Charles. Uh, sometimes he's so, so close you can't motion him out, but I guess in this particular formation you can. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it would be different. Uh, but other than that, like I said, you'll typically see it where you'll hit the motion button. He'll either move like a foot or he'll just move to the side of the quarterback, and it doesn't really give you the setup that, you, that I want. So in this particular play, um, I guess you can motion him out. I typically run this out of the bunch. Uh, with the bunch, you can do this without question. Uh, but basically what I want to do is I either want to put him on an out route, depending on if nobody... Um, reacted to him like nobody did here and he'll just get open right away I mean that I guess that linebacker drops back but he's not gonna be able to cover him the sideline so if nobody stands up in front of him do it like that otherwise um, like here you got a safety down here I'm not sure it looks like he's probably blitzing so I probably could keep it that way but uh, to be more safe I probably would typically put him into a slant uh, but since I'm pretty sure he's blitzing I'll go ahead and run it like this and sure enough, he is. Uh, but basically, that's, you know, you're, if you have a fast running back like I've been using this whole time, he's just going to beat that up. So I'm not going to keep running it like that because obviously I want to show some of these other routes off. Uh, but there you can see the linebacker reacted. So all I want to do here, I mean, I could try, since he's on a linebacker that probably would lose to him, I could still put him in that route. Or I could put him into a slant, which is what I want to do because I want to show him some of these other routes. So what that's going to do is that's going to create, um, you know, some competition over the middle there. And typically Charles comes open underneath everything on that slant, which is nice. Your other routes in green and uh, Sanders are pretty good. Sanders can get open uh, right away in the flats if there's nothing there. Like this is a cover three. So I could pass lead him outside. Nice, easy catch and run. Real quick play. Yeah, the only route that really doesn't get open here in any capacity is Thomas. I mean, uh, unless it's like maybe a cover two hard flat. Um, but if I think it's a cover three, putting him on an out route and then smart routing was a good look. Um, and that would be like your best uh, play right there. Uh, but this is really all about, you know, like I said, Charles is going to probably be the most consistently open. But uh, like I said, if you want another option for, if you want another guy that has open ability, um, it would be uh, Thomas on, a, on an out route. Small route out route. So here we go. Once again, we get that underneath route. Anytime you got cover three, that's going to be the read right away. But, uh, you know, there's some really good cover three um, options here with your outside receivers. Not getting a lot of cover three looks, though, but this is probably the best way to run it, um, you know, on a on a uh, play-by-play -play basis. 
Um, and here we got that R1 route. I don't know, that guy, I don't know if he's being crossed man there or what, but I don't want to make this too long, though, so I'll go ahead and I'll end it there. Uh, Three-part series, if you're on my Patreon, you got it all right away. Um, if you're on my YouTube, you, you had to wait. Uh, I typically space these out. Uh, but, you know, I'm open to uh, whatever playbook you guys want me to do next. It's really up to you. I, I try to I try to please you guys. So, like I said, leave it in the comment section. Let me know below. Uh, reach out to me one way or another. And uh, that's it. Other than that, thanks for watching. Mad Money Shit out. If you need more help or just want to show your support, then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.